I'm reviewing two episodes of Violet Evergarden for you guys. Not because I've been behind on anything, but because I got Bloodborne for free on PS4, and frankly, I just couldn't tear myself away from it. So, here's Violet Evergarden. Honestly, reviewing both of these episodes back-to-back -back is very fitting as they are connected. Not in a sense that this is like a two-parter or anything. Actually, it is kind of a two-parter, to be perfectly honest. It's basically the origin of Violet Evergarden herself, getting to see the strong relationship she had with Major Gilbert and how it led to her losing her arms and, of course, losing her love. Major Gilbert himself. This episode, uh, I shouldn't say this episode, I'm reviewing two here. Corey, get your crap together. Uh, both of these episodes have some of the best imagery that I've seen from the series, and the exact opposite of everything that we've seen that preceded it. Everything else in Violet Evergarden thus far has been pristine and beautiful and super clean and just reeking of amazing atmosphere. These two episodes almost felt like a completely different series is how they delved into the darkest parts of humanity Humanity, that little thing we like to call war. And the way that it's depicted in these episodes is just brilliant. Not to mention finally getting to see Violet in action and finally getting to see some, believe it or not, action scenes from Violet Evergarden, which are great, super gritty, violent, and ultra high-paced action scenes type like the stuff you'd see in a big Hollywood film, except here it just bleeds with that amazing style. The first time we get to see Violet actually going into a battle, reluctantly with Major Gilbert, of course, because he doesn't want her to get hurt or die, and frankly, he kind of loves the girl. But she's really good at what she does, and man, she does it with style. She sneaks around like solid snakes, slitting throats, using guns, using martial arts, and even fighting among fire. The scene where we actually get to see her taking on these group of soldiers with a massive fire erupting all around her and just the embers floating around in the air and just getting to see her move around, she was like this perfect silhouette moving around in the fire. It was beautifully violent, to say the least. But again, it's also so conflicting because you don't want this type of thing for Violet, especially with everything that she's been going through in this series. You want her to find peace with herself and the fact that Gilbert himself, well, he's gone. He's missing in action. He still might return in the series, though. I don't know. I, I have a feeling they could actually do something like that. But really, these episodes dive into her backstory, and that's because she's desperately wanting to know what happened to Gilbert. She even goes to confront his brother, he doesn't really know anything, it's just a segue into the flashback of everything that's going on here. And she even ends up going to the site of where she lost her arms and where supposedly he was dead or missing in action. And it's all, like I said, just sort of trying to tie into the flashbacks of what happened to her. And then we get to see them going through multiple battles. We then get this one climactic battle where they're about to take the enemy base, which is brilliantly choreographed with all of the soldiers and the battle scenes. And Violet and Gilbert make it to the top. They capture the base, they send out a flare, but then they end up getting caught in a landslide and then a massive explosion, which ends up blowing Violet's arms off, severely injuring Gilbert, and then another landslide comes in, takes him away, and Violet is separated from the one that she loves, but she doesn't know why she loves him because she doesn't know what love is. It's such a heartbreaking moment, that moment when Gilbert is telling her that basically this is it, you gotta go on, live and be free and do your thing. And she just doesn't know what's going on here. She's so robotic, in a sense, in the way that she takes orders and does things, that she doesn't even really know what's going on, and she can't process it, and it's a heartbreaking moment. And that brings us to the present of the series, where she sort of finally accepts things, and she even goes back to work with Hodgins, but things are never going to be the same after this moment. Her world has been completely crushed. The one that she loves is nowhere to be seen, and she doesn't even know why she feels these feelings for him yet. But still, there is some hope. And even after a very, very disturbing scene where it seems like Violet's actually going to try and kill herself with her very own freaking adamant hands, she simply just can't bring herself to do it. Again, one of the most heartbreaking things about seeing uh, the th things she went through and then finally getting back on top of things only to be brought to the point where she feels the need that she has to kill herself as she has no worth or anything for her future. It's just intense, man. It hits right here. But there is hope for the future. We do get a pleasant ending from both of these episodes 
which shows there is going to be something more for her, but it's going to take some time. Basically, we're almost in a way back to square one. But this time, I think she's definitely going to have much more of an edge in what it is that she plans to do. As for the whole Gilbert thing, who knows? I, I still think there's potential for him actually popping up at some point in the, the series. Uh, it, it could very well happen. I don't know. But what I will say is, what's the rundown on this episode, or both of these episodes, of Violet Evergarden? Uh, just, yeah, these episodes speak for themselves. They're absolutely gorgeous in every way. In terms of production value, five out of five stuff. But the storytelling is also really good. I'm really glad that this whole backstory didn't have to be stretched over an entire arc. And being told, oh, really over the course of an episode of an and a half, it was done really well. And just absolutely heartbreaking to see this, this poor young girl who was just brought and turned into a soldier and getting to see Gilbert's confliction over all of this because he loved her, he cared about her, he didn't want her to be involved in this, but his incredibly corrupt superiors are the ones who dragged him into this situation, and I'm surprised he didn't try to go against them in many ways. He still just sort of went along with the flock, so to speak, which is kind of strange when you actually do think about it, but even at the end, even with all that, like that, that scene where Violet tried to kill herself was just one of the just most sad things that I've actually seen in the entire series. And of course, the symbolism of her killing her with the metaphorical hands, the things that were the result of both her affliction and the what led to the death of Gilbert and everything. It's just like, it's a constant haunting memory, and it's the thing that's ultimately going to consume her. It's pretty hardcore stuff, and but it's all topped off with amazing production value, really great storytelling, beautiful art direction, and showing us that there is hope. There is always hope. You should always look for it. Violet Evergarden is great. You should be checking it out if you're not. Really, it's just another endorsement for the rest of the series. I loved both of these episodes, and that's why I'm giving them both a 5 out of 5. Check it out, guys. I'd love to hear your thoughts about this episode. Make sure to tell me in the comment section below. Start a discussion. I'd love to talk with you guys about this one. Thank you again for watching, and as always, stay down now, baby.